More than 67,300 babies are born in India every day. India is a country that's full of ancient traditions and modern excesses. It's full of fascinating and unusual stories and events. And it's a country of contradictions and endless fascination. But it has a dark side as well. Here are 20 shocking facts about India. Number 20. Cows are considered sacred. In India, the cow is considered a sacred animal, and for this reason there are a whole lot of cows just left to freely wander the streets all across the country. In fact, it's believed to be nearly 6 million cows that are just wandering around. Many of these cows will end up in urban areas, causing all kinds of mischief on the streets. Most are pretty benign and just cause traffic jams and poo-based problems, but every once in a while, one of these divine creatures goes rogue and turns to the dark side. There are very good reasons that cows are so revered within the country. In Hinduism, the cow holds sacred significance due to its association with a bunch of different deities. It's seen as a symbol of purity, nonviolence, and motherhood, and they're revered for providing essential resources like milk, dung for fuel, and labor for agricultural activities. The concept of ahimsa, or nonviolence, is deeply ingrained in Hindu philosophy, and this actually extends to the protection of all living beings making the cow a symbol of gentleness and compassion. This is one of the reasons that India is the most vegetarian place on Earth. Before we go on, like this video, smash the subscribe button, and click the notification bell right now, or this centipede will crawl on your face when you're sleeping. Now it's time for the fancy topic. Well, this may indeed be the dark side of India. This man is clearly doing some extraordinary things in order to overcome his disability. But the question I have is, does he really have to be doing it on food? And more specifically, with his armpit? Now sometimes it really is best not to see how the sausage is made, but in the case of this guy's armpit pies or whatever, it's probably a good idea to see exactly how they're made so that you can vow to never ever eat them. What do you think about all this sweaty shenanigans? Would you eat an armpit flavored bun? As always, you can comment down below using the hashtag fancy topic and let me know what you think in regards to what you just saw on the screen. Number 19. India is the wettest inhabited place on earth. This is a village in India. And according to our old clipboard clutching friends at the Guinness Book of World Records, it is officially the wettest inhabited place on Earth. Now, this may come as a surprise to all of you who thought that it just rained all the time in England. Well, it does, but that's just a persistent drizzle. This place in India has quite literally the heaviest rains of anywhere on the entire planet. They actually experience 467 inches of rain per year. To put this into perspective, London actually only has about 23 inches per year, whereas New York City features 46.6 inches per year. The monsoon season in India is actually six months long and can stretch all the way from May until October. The heavy rains make their way across the country during these months, but they also land even more heavily than anywhere else in this area of northeastern India. In fact, the place experiences 275 inches of rainfall in just two months of the peak monsoon season during June and July. The people of the region are so used to the heavy rains that they actually have their own special sorts of umbrellas, which are known as nups. These are made from banana leaves and bamboo, and they allow the user to have the use of both hands, while also having the benefit of being able to withstand the high winds. So there's a lot less chance of a Mary Poppins style moment. Number 18. India has millions of temples. With 1.1 billion Hindu faithful, in the entirety of 1.2 billion practicing Hindus worldwide, India has 94% of all the Hindus on the planet. It stands to reason then that it would also have a significant proportion of the world's Hindu temples as well. According to some counts, there are actually as many as 3 million Hindu temples in India, but this number is subject to change all the time as many more are being constructed in an ongoing campaign to build temples in every state across the country. 
Temples in India vary enormously in size and design, but they're all there with the purpose of connecting Hindus with their gods. The holy place has 23,000 temples all to itself, indicating the level of dedication to the building and maintenance of places of worship for the Hindu faith. As well as all the temples to Hinduism, there are also more than 300,000 mosques for the Muslim population all across India. Number 17. The Chenab Bridge The Chenab Railway Arch Bridge extends across the expanse of the Chenab River. It's not only a colossal feat of engineering, but it's also the highest railway bridge in the whole wide world. Constructed at 1,178 feet above the river, it transports Indian railway trains all across the difficult and mountainous terrain. The bridge was only finally completed and inaugurated in August of 2022, and it's actually not quite in service for railway transport just yet, but that moment is imminent, and despite its status as the highest railway bridge, it's actually only the 16th highest bridge in general in the world and the 11th longest, although it is the longest bridge to have a 5 foot 6 inch broad gauge railway running across it. The whole area is mountainous, it's smack bang in the middle of the Himalayas, and it's extremely difficult to navigate, let alone travel through with a railway network. So, the engineering here is nothing short of remarkable. The bridge is the crowning glory of a series of complex tunnels and bridges that are used by the railway to traverse this crazy and tough landscape. Number 16. The Temple of Rats Next up is something which has featured in my nightmares on the regular ever since I first heard about it. And frankly, even though I do understand that this is part of many people's religious beliefs, it still gives me a raging case of the heebie-jeebies. This is the Temple of Rats in Rajasthan, and it's exactly what it sounds like. Yes, this is a temple that is dedicated to rats. And as a result, there are literally thousands of the creatures swarming all over the place because it is their home after all. This is a religious place, and many people actually come here on a pilgrimage to pay respects to the rats. But its curious nature also means that the temple is often a stop on the trail for many tourists. And even so, let's just move on swiftly, shall we? Because I may never sleep again. Number 15. The Second Most Populous Country India is the second most populous country in the world, after China, although if the demographics keep heading the way they currently are, the country could actually overtake China in the future. More than 67,300 babies are born in India every day. The population of India is incredibly diverse and is home to a load of different cultures, languages, religions, and traditions. And according to estimates, India's population exceeds 1.3 billion people, which is a significant portion of the overall global population. India's population growth has been the result of lots of things, Factors like high fertility rates, increased life expectancy, and improved healthcare have all contributed to the country's expansion of people. But India has also made progress in areas like education, healthcare, and family planning to address the challenges that are associated with a large and growing population. Number 14. Ladakh Road Despite the fact that the local residents believe that the magnetic hill in Ladakh, India is the stairway to heaven, it's more likely to be a phenomenon that we've seen in several places around the world. There are some places, like this magnetic hill, that seem to go up when they actually go down and down when they actually go up. What is this topsy-turvy nonsense world that we've stumbled upon? It's so very silly. But if you happen to go out in search of this weird place, it has been helpfully signposted, the phenomenon that defies gravity. It's freezing cold, I think it's, it's minus 10 degrees, if not colder. And a handy white box has been marked out on the road in which you are to park your vehicle, pop it into neutral, and then allow your car to alarmingly begin moving forward despite the fact that it seems to be uphill. This is the road known as Magnetic Road, but despite its appearance, it actually goes downhill. It's kind of crazy, right? As a tourist attraction, the place obviously has a few theories that are attached to its unusual phenomenon. Some locals are believers in the stairway to heaven theory, whereby the road was once the place which would convey the good on their way to heaven, and another idea is that the hill has an extra strong magnetic force that's enough to interfere with passing aircraft. This is, however, unproven. 
The final theory is the most accepted one, that despite being unproven apparently, one reckons that this is a so-called Cyclops Hill, meaning that it will actually create an optical illusion which simply makes the driver think that they're looking at going uphill when they're actually in fact going downhill. Nonetheless, it's all enough to make you seasick. Number 13. The Mysterious Skeleton Lake And now for something completely gruesome. All the way back in 1942, a British guard made a discovery in Rupkund, India that freaked everyone out. There was a frozen lake that appeared to be stuffed full of skeletons. The ice was melting due to the summer conditions, and it had begun to reveal more and more bony remains that were floating in the waters and heaped all around the edge of the lake. As it was wartime, it was immediately assumed that these must be the bodies of enemy soldiers who had tried to sneak into India, but on further investigation, they found that these bodies were not fresh enough to be that. It seemed as though the bones were probably rather old indeed, although they couldn't determine how old, or for that matter, what it was that might have actually killed over 200 people in this valley. Then in 2004, an expedition to the site made a discovery. The bodies were dated to be from around 850 AD, and they all appeared to be from two distinct groups of people, a tribe or family, and a group of locals. The artifacts discovered alongside the skeletons revealed that they were a group that was being led through the valley by guides from the local area. They had all died in the same kind of way, by heavy blows to the head, by a rounded object from directly above. And that's when the plot thickened. Then they uncovered an ancient folk song from the region, which described a goddess that was made angry by outsiders damaging her mountains, and that she had flung enormous hailstones as hard as iron down upon them. It was concluded that these people had all been trapped in the valley when a terrible hailstorm came, and with hailstones as big as nine inches in circumference, they had nowhere to get shelter, and they simply died. How absolutely terrifying. Number 12. Gandhi Mahatma Gandhi is sometimes known as the father of the nation in India, and is one of the country's most beloved icons. His influence has extended far beyond India itself, and he's globally recognized as a symbol of peace, nonviolence, and the power of civil disobedience. Gandhi was the figurehead in India's struggle for independence from British colonial rule, his philosophy of nonviolent resistance encapsulated in the term of something that I can't pronounce, was at the heart of the Indian independence movement. Through acts of civil disobedience, he had inspired millions to join the fight for freedom, and also advocated for social reform, religious tolerance, and the enfranchisement of marginalized people. Since his assassination in 1948, his legacy has continued to influence civil rights movements and leaders worldwide, including Martin Luther King Jr. and Nelson Mandela. In India, his birthday of October 2nd is celebrated, and it's a national holiday that includes prayer services, tributes, and events promoting his values. Number 11. Hinduism is the oldest religion in the world. Hinduism is often regarded as one of the oldest religions, and it's believed that its roots trace back thousands of years. It's difficult to trace an exact path of the development of this complex and sprawling religion, but it is safe to say that it has been practiced all across the Indian subcontinent for millennia. The religious texts that are associated with it are some of the oldest sacred scriptures in the world. The Rig Veda is the oldest of the four Vedas and contains hymns and rituals that provide insights into the early religious beliefs of the ancient inhabitants of the region. Hinduism is unusual in that it doesn't have a single founder or a specific point of origin, but has actually evolved over thousands of years through a lot of cultural, philosophical, and religious ways. Number 10. Most Indians eat only with their fingers. Now, it's not unusual across the world to find various different ways of eating food. And in India, they generally use their hands to eat instead of cutlery. While to some cultures this may be unusual, there are literally billions of people for whom using their fingers to eat is simply the most sensible and available option. In Indian culture, the use of fingers to eat apparently began in teachings that go back thousands of years, each finger representing one of the five elements, and this plays a part in the preparation and consumption of food. 
There's a belief that if you join all of your fingers together, you'll be able to more fully enjoy the taste of what it is that you're consuming. It's also a mark of respect to eat with one's hands, well, with the right hand, since this is the one which is considered clean. To use the left one is not polite, for reasons I will leave to you to discern. Number 9. A Village With No Doors There is a village in India which has had no thefts in 400 years, or at least that's what they claim. And what is their secret? Well, they have no doors on their homes. This is the small village of Shani Shingnapur, and they have no locks. And in fact, they don't even have doors on their homes. The people of the village have put their faith in the Lord Shani, who they believe protects them, and therefore they have no need for doors or any other form of protection from outside dangers. Nobody even dares to steal from here, as they believe that any thieves will be punished by being given bad luck for seven years, or being struck with blindness, or even sent mad if they were to attempt to steal. Apparently their faith is so strong that even the post office and police station does not have a door. Number 8. Bandra Worli Sea Link Bridge This is a bridge that's a vast cable-stayed bridge in Mumbai, India, connecting the suburb of Bandra with Worli. It opened in 2009 and stretches over an improbably long three and a half miles. It's famous for being such a massive feat of engineering and for the sheer quantity of materials involved in building such a structure. The cables in this one, albeit quite unbearably long bridge, could apparently reach all the way around the entire circumference of the globe. Oh, and it's also said to weigh as much as 50,000 African elephants, if you can even imagine such a thing to begin with. Number 7. The Festival of Holi Holi, or the Festival of Colors, is one of the most vibrant of all the celebrations in Hinduism and is seen as the beginning of spring. This ancient festival is observed with a good deal of enthusiasm all throughout India. It typically takes place in March over the course of two days, and the first evening is known as Holika Dahan, during which bonfires are lit and are said to symbolize the triumph of good over evil. We're celebrating Holi. You have the rooftop Holi dance class. Then, the main day is when people do all of the throwing of colored powders, for which the festival is best known. The streets are full of people of all ages covered in these vivid colors. There are also lots of traditional sweets, music, and dancing that are enjoyed all throughout the festival. Number 6. The World's Largest Sundial the world's largest sundial, which is known as the Samrat Yantra, can be found in India in an observatory that dates back to the 18th century. This giant sundial measures 88 feet tall, which is rather large for a sundial, you have to admit, and it also has an incline angle that's equal to the latitude of the place in which it sits. Now, it is designed to function as an equatorial sundial, providing accurate time readings with a precision of about two seconds, which is not bad for something which is really rather elderly. The sundial is made up of a massive triangular thing that is the part that casts the shadow and a large sloping structure made of brick and lime plaster. The shadow cast by the triangular thing moves along the markings on the dial, and just like in a boring regular-sized sundial, it indicates the time of day. It's recognized as a UNESCO World Heritage Site and naturally attracts visitors and astronomers who are all apparently very interested in big instruments and probably also in the scientific achievements of ancient India. Number 5. The Taj Mahal is changing color. The Taj Mahal is one of India's biggest tourist attractions and draws in huge crowds every single day, millions per year in fact. It's a mausoleum from the 17th century, which was built by a man who was a emperor at the time. His queen had died in childbirth, and the heartbroken emperor had built the Taj Mahal as a memory to his beloved wife. The structure is quite remarkable, with its intricate latticework and designs in white marble, brick, and red sandstone. But as well as what can be seen by visitors to the monument, there are actually 20 rooms, which are all believed to be kept under lock and key. Recently, a petition had been filed by a member of India's main political party that demanded that all of these doors be opened in order to find out the real history of the structure. 
A judge clearly disagreed that this was an important thing to do and dismissed the case. The doors remain locked and whatever secrets, if any, are inside remaining hidden. Although many of the Taj Mahal's secrets are yet to be revealed, it's also betraying signs of age and weathering that cannot be hidden. The high levels of pollution in the air have actually begun to change the pure white walls of the structure into a dingy and yellow color. India certainly suffers from some of the worst air pollution, and now the contaminants in the air are even damaging the inanimate objects as well. It's beginning to look a lot like the walls of a pub in the 1970s. Number 4. Coke and Pepsi are full of pesticides People all over the place worry about how drinking fizzy pop may end up affecting their health, but that's usually because they're concerned about high levels of sugar or perhaps the effects of weird artificial sweeteners on their brains. But in India, there are some other distinctly alarming issues with the two most famous beverages in the world, Coca-Cola and Pepsi. Apparently, there have been instances where pesticides were reportedly detected in both of the drinks in India, and naturally, people have become very worried about the safety of these sodas. It's true that some independent studies and investigations did find traces of pesticides, which included different ones, along with herbicides, in some samples of the carbonated drinks. So, what exactly is going on, and what does it mean for these fizzy drinks and those who drink them? The controversy first got a hold of the public's imagination all the way back in the early 2000s, when the Center for Science and Environment conducted testing on several soft drink brands that included Coca-Cola and Pepsi. They claimed that they had found elevated levels of pesticides in these beverages, sparking public outrage and calls for more strict regulations. In response, both Coca-Cola and Pepsi had challenged the findings, because of course they did, and they asserted that their products complied with both Indian standards and international regulations. The companies argued that the detected pesticide levels were all within permissible limits that were set by regulatory authorities. But did you know that any level of pesticide was considered to be just fine in your pop? Well, me neither. But then again, you do learn something new every day here at the Fancy Banana Down, don't you? The pesticide controversy then led to a much more intense scrutiny of food safety standards while leading to calls for more strict regulations in the beverage industry in India. So, where's the pesticide problem now, you may ask? Well, subsequent studies have produced a whole load of varying results, so nobody's really been able to get a grip on the issue. But it did draw the gross hidden secrets of the food industry to people's attention. So, since there's been a focus on the importance of rigorous monitoring and testing to ensure the safety of food and beverages consumed by the public, but naturally, when you're dealing with these sorts of corporations, the notion of transparency or responsibility is never really at the forefront of their business model. So suck it up, pesticides and all. Number 3. North Sentinel Island The Sentinelese are of the most isolated people on the planet. They actively reject any contact with the outside world, and they may have inhabited their island as a people for 55,000 years now. Complete isolation on a small island in the Indian Ocean means that the Sentinelese are violently protective of their territory and have murdered anyone that has poked their nose into their business. It does sound harsh, but with their neighboring island's populations destroyed by disease that was imported from other places, any germ or virus that they might catch from an outsider would probably wipe them out. Obviously, it's tricky to understand anything much about a tribe that you can't really get near without receiving an arrow in the chest. And so, all that's known has been observed by a few nosy parkers on boats that were carefully moored further out than the arrows could reach off the coast of the island. In 1880, a British expedition would land on the island and discover the villages and houses abandoned. Presumably, the tribe had seen the invading force and then hidden themselves. The expeditioners did come across an old couple and some children and in the hideous wisdom of the colonial attitude, they then kidnapped the people from the island for scientific reasons. The Sentinelese quickly became sick with disease, and the older people all perished. The children were returned to the island, but how many were then infected with deadly diseases is obviously unknown. It's no wonder that the outsider is met with hostility by the Sentinelese. Various attempts at communication have been made throughout the 1970s and 80s, with gifts being left on the beaches, 
but most were rejected and then buried by the tribe. More recently, it's finally been accepted that this is probably the safest for the Sentinelese tribe if they're just left in peace. I guess the nosy Parkers have finally gotten the message. Number 2. The Kum Mela The Kum Mela is pretty much one of the largest religious gatherings on Earth and attracts literally millions of pilgrims to the banks of sacred rivers in India. Held periodically every 12 years and 6 years, depending on the type of festival, this Hindu festival is renowned for its sheer enormous size as well as its colossal spiritual significance. It rotates between four locations, all at sites of significant spiritual importance where holy waters meet. Pilgrims will gather to take a dip in these sacred rivers, believing that it cleanses them of sins and leads to spiritual liberation. And who doesn't want a little bit of that, I ask you? The vast congregations during the festivals are actually so immense that they can be observed from space. It's crazy, but it's true. And also, satellite imagery has captured the sprawling tent cities, the colorful processions, and the millions of people participating in various religious rituals. Now, the temporary structures, makeshift accommodations, and the overall scale of the event create a quite visual spectacle that stands out even from space, and it's basically totally bananas. Number 1. Frogs are married Varanasi is one of the oldest continuously inhabited cities in the world, and it holds deep cultural and spiritual significance. Located along the banks of the sacred Ganges River in India, it's famous for its ghats, temples, and super intense spiritual atmosphere. It's a pilgrimage destination for Hindus and a center for various rituals and ceremonies. It's the most famous as a place that many Hindus will choose to go to die. One unusual ritual that captures the city's more strange traditions is the Manduka Paranaya, or the Frog Marriage Ceremony. This bizarre event takes place annually and involves the symbolic marriage of two frogs. The ritual is believed to appease the rain gods while bringing about a good monsoon which is essential for a good harvest and prosperity. The ceremony involves dressing up the frogs as bride and groom, complete with traditional attire and accessories. A priest will conduct the wedding ritual with the chanting of mantras and performing of traditional customs, a whole lot like a regular sort of human marriage ceremony. Locals and visitors alike all participate in this unique event albeit with a sense of humor, because even though it's tradition, it's still slightly silly. Well, that's it from today's trip into the colorful and dynamic country of India. Do you fancy a trip there? And will it be on your bucket list? Go ahead and let me know all about it in the comments section down below. Check out the other cool things on the screen, and I'll see you next time.